So this is the first piece of original art that I ever bought. I ordered, ordered it through the mail in 1981, and when I got it, it just blew my mind. Barry Smith, now called Barry Windsor Smith, was my favorite, favorite artist in, in that time. And uh, he still is one of my favorite artists. Um, I just thought the, his drawing ability was so incredible. If you were a fan of Conan, or if you are a fan of Conan, you'll remember that he started off with a very Kirby-influenced style, and then he took a break right around Conan number six, 15, I believe, or 16, and when he came back in Conan number 19, gosh, I wish my memory was better, he came back with this new detailed look that was so mind-blowing to me. I mean, just look at that panel that is on screen right now. Look at the detail. That's just the middle tier of a comic book. And these were printed from the pencils because he turned the story in too late. You know, so it wasn't, it wasn't possible to be inked. And as a result, you know, we're able to look at this pencils only look into Barry Smith from this time period. If you'll notice on the, on the edges of the board, you'll see there's little notes. Uh, and when I saw that, I thought, oh my, Smith is giving all these notes to Roy Thomas, to the colorist. Uh, he was really doing a major portion of the storytelling. And right down here at the bottom, you can see little notes. I love those. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, I can't believe, even when I look at it right now, I just can't believe the detail in, in here. Not so, uh, so much an example of storytelling, but just an example of beautiful illustration. And when I got that page, I, I bought two pages from that at that time, and they came in the mail, and I think I, I just flipped out, <laughs> totally flipped out. Uh, Barry was looking so incredible. I mean, the, the bottom panel with all those bodies, I remember sitting in my bedroom just looking at that panel, and I was thinking, my goodness, how could he draw every figure? in this panel and what made him do it was because knowing how small they would produce in the printed comic book but he did it he was crazy he was dedicated to conan and when he got the book back he for some reason he went in and inked that that last figure but yeah pure smith pencils very very rare Spectacular in that middle tier, that, that, that middle panel of that middle tier, I think, is just an incredible example of how good Smith was, even at that stage of his career. So you asked me if it ever was in my favor to uh, be friends with Albert. Well, it was in my favor because I love Albert, you know, of course, but this is a page that I have to say thank you, Albert, because he called me up on one of his uh, one night and said, Richard, I just got this page in and I was wondering if you wanted it. And as soon as he explained a little bit about the page, I said, yes, <laughs> without even having to go to reference it. It's uh, the climax of the Ra's al Ghul saga. Um, and uh, I, I was uh, so blown away by this comic book when I read it. And also, I remember sitting on the beach in San Susi, uh, Kaimana Beach in Waikiki, with Scott Williams talking about this issue. And we were just going on how great, you know, the Neil Adams was on, the, in this, on this particular Ra's al Ghul saga. Um, just beautiful work by... Um, Neil and Dick, and I still qu wonder in my mind, like, did Neil go in and, and, and ink some of the work himself, or is it just all Dick? And Scott tells me, it's all Dick, but I see things in the inks on a lot of Neil's pieces that 
I just look at and I and I think I recognize little um, touches of Adam's inks, like the little squiggles on the bottom panel of his hair chest. You know, I, I they just to me seem a little more free than Dick's. Yeah, a little more impressionistic than what Dick did. Dick was at a, was very professional. This looks very quick to me. So this didn't come from Albert, and I have to say thank you to the CFA APA because I was a member of that in the early 90s, and I think I printed that previous page in one of the issues, and uh, a couple of weeks after it came out, I get a phone call from Glenn David Gold, who I really only knew as an acquaintance, but he calls me up and says, hey Richard, you know, I know where the page after the page that you have is, is, and you may be able to work out a deal. I didn't know Wayne Osborne at the time, but Wayne Osborne was the owner of this page. And I called him up and I said, hey Wayne, you know, I got the previous page, can we work out a deal for this page? And Wayne, thank you Wayne, he said, okay, let's do it. We made a very nice trade that we were both happy with. And uh, I tell you, to this day, when I look at this page, it really gives me chills because, of course, if you know the story, if you know the issue, if you know the impact of these pages, um, having these two pages in my collection are quite the apex of my Neil Adams collecting. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And there's many apexes in my Neil Adams collecting because he's become my, now, my favorite artist. And it's the nostalgia of it. He was the first artist that I really loved. And, and now that I'm older, I really find myself just focusing in more so on, on Neil. And this is from the famous uh, issue, uh, Green Lantern 76. It's right after he's questioned why, why you are only spending all your time in outer space and you're not spending time on Earth. And it actually continues that, that storyline in that now Green Lantern is still really um, torn by what he's just heard. And he's contemplating, where do I go from this point in my life? And Neil and that second panel, just look at the emotion, you know, the facial expressions. Um, he could do it all. He could do it all. And of course, the oath. You got to have the oath. Uh, what's not to love about every single page in The Watchmen? Produced by Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons, they were an incredible team. The storytelling, the craft. Um, it's an ex example that, that from the very beginning of the story, and I always look at this page and I say, this is the page where the mystery begins because this is the page where Rorschach comes into the comedian's apartment and he discovers the hidden closet and re starts to realize that he was the comedian and somebody's coming after the comedians. And it also gives us a little insight to the, um, the Minutemen in the, in the bottom tier. Uh, it's just amazing, Dave Gibbons, was the perfect guy to do this story because the clarity of his work is just beautiful to see. Just beautiful. And then of course the herm from Rorschach because he knows this is the beginning of something, something bad. And when you bought a page in those days, if you were lucky, you had the original color guide on the back of the page. And I was lucky with this when it came with the color guide. Thank you, Scott. I still remember um, calling you up and asking for it. And, 
and I still have it, and I love it, love it. I love the Watchmen. It's one of the my best reading experiences in all my years of comics. Yeah. I mean, and another thing is, just look at the blacks. They're just amazing. The lighting, wow. So, World's Finest, with, uh, written by Dave Gibbons and drawn by Steve Rude and penciled by Steve Rude and inked by Carl Kessel, I believe, came out a couple of years after Watchmen. And this is an example of how people complain that buying or good original art is r so expensive. Well, I don't know what this page would go for at, at this time, but when I purchased it, it was fairly inexpensive. I got it off of eBay from Steve Rude. And uh, I just think it's a beautiful example of storytelling in that you have the, the origin story of side by side with Batman and Superman, Superman and Batman. And it's just beautifully told in eight panels. Uh, Steve Rude is an incredible artist that I wish we'd see more of his work. Mm, he's dedicated himself to Nexus, but I always love seeing his outside projects that he did at Marvel and at DC. It's just perfect um, example of, of who these characters are and where they came from. This show and tell has been all about storytelling in comic books and this to me is one of my best examples of comic book storytelling. It's from The Dark Knight Triumphant, Frank Miller, Klaus Janssen of course. What I love about this page is the fact that you get beautiful drawing. You get great storytelling from panel to panel to panel. You have sound effects, you have special effects. Mm. And word bubbles too. The, yeah, the lettering, the everything is just what you want in a page. As far as an action page goes, I can't imagine that you can, I'm sure you can find things just as good, but I can't imagine that you can find an action page that's better. It's going to be hard to find. What I, and if you look at it really closely, in this first panel uh, to the right of Robin, Klaus Janssen e even used his thumbprints to d get that effect. Uh, yeah, just a fantastic example of comic book storytelling done by two masters at the peak of their career, of their skills. I mean, I'm sure they've, they've gone on and adapted their styles, but at this time, at this moment, in this style, this was their best.